Okay, go. Three, three, three two, two, one. One. We're really bad at it. Like, we, it's like I'm waiting for you. The delay, the delay three. is bad, yeah. yeah. What's good, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the What's Good Games podcast. Your place to find video game news, commentary, analysis, and of course, what you really come here for, the funny stuff. I'm your host, Andrea Renee, joined by Miss Christine Steimer. Feeling hello. better this week? A little bit? The right side of my ear says hello, but the left side says no thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you look a lot still, better. Still can't hear. Yeah, I no, I'm definitely, I feel a lot better, but still can't hear. Yeah. Out of this side. Sometimes it takes a little bit for that stuff to heal up. Yes. yes. I wish it would go faster. Don't we all? Come on, little eardrum. Just snap back to where you were before. <laughs> oh, wow. What did oh, I say? <laughs> I wish it would go faster. Oh, yeah, okay. That and works. Brittany uh, Brombacher is also here. Hi. This is going to be a weird episode. I can feel it. There's something in the air today. I feel it in your bones. <laughs> feel it in my bones. Yeah, I don't I know. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm also, um, I'm also on antibiotics recovering from bronchitis and an ear infection. Like I said last week, it's just going around, man. It's just happening. You know, I've, I've never thought of like an ear infection as going around, but yeah, I guess so. Well, yeah. technically the ear infection part isn't the one that goes around. It's the cold or the flu with the dripping in the cavities behind your nose that causes the ear infection. Technically, mm, an ear infection delicious. is not contagious, but oh the other part is, you know, the expelling of fluids from your body. <laughs> Yeah, people were like, when I was like, oh, I have a really bad ear infection. They're like, oh, get away from me. And I'm like, this is not, like, what, what am I going to do? It's Rub my like ear your on ear, you? Like, what are you? Yeah. It's not like your ear projectile fluids. It's not like yeah, it just, it was yeah. very bizarre. I don't know why people were acting like It was just like a I subtle trickle. And... Hello? <laughs> I was just like, pew, pew. <laughs> that would be really, like, disturbing if you came across somebody whose ear was, like, ejecting fluid. I mean, mine was really ejecting gross. fluid, but not, like, in Projectile. A... Not projectile. It was just dripping, yeah, leaking. Yeah. Oh boy. Okay, Gravity ladies and gentlemen. Sorry, this work. got this got off to a start. Um, yeah. We, uh, as we mentioned, it might be a little bit of a weird show this week. Um, today is <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> That's true. For half a second, I was like, should we stop the tape and start over? But no, no. we're just gonna we're just gonna keep on going. Um, Keep on, struggle bus. Keep on. I know. Uh, But the good news is next week, as we mentioned previously, will be our Patreon exclusive live streams. That's right. The happy hour Q&A and the after hour stream are both happening on Tuesday, April 24th. So if you are a member of our amazing community over at patreon.com slash what's good games. Mark that in your calendar. We would love for you to join us. It's always an amazingly hysterical time. <laughs> um, we have lots of fun uh, and you guys can join in the happy hour Q and a for just $1 a month. They get you access to the happy hour Q and a to our Patreon exclusive videos and to everything available on our feed. We would love to, to, to have you. It's um it's lots of fun. Uh, we also have lots of cool stuff happening over at, twitter.com slash what's good underscore games um recently we tweeted a photo or retweeted a photo i should say of Brittany and i at the state of decay event here in san francisco you might be wondering hey when are you going to talk about that game and all i can tell you is soon yeah <laughs> we can't we, do specifics yeah. that's what we've been, we've been told we can say the word soon <laughs> I'm sure everyone in PR's favorite word. I'm sure someone out there has tweeted the date out. Um, I, th- I think that's partially why I'm feeling a little weird today. I did a same day trip to San Francisco, which I really enjoyed. I like doing those actually. I don't mind them, but I'm not used really? to them. I don't think I'd want to go to the airport twice in one day. It's not I ideal. Think, I think it just because it hasn't slowed down, because it, it was like GDC, Vegas. Packs. I'm like a same day trip. Sure, let's do ten of them. You know, I think the minute like we have a week in between, I'll crash. But now I'm on that adrenaline, that adrenaline bus. I crashed last week. Crashed hard. Well, you were very sick. Infection land. That's yeah. a good land. But anyway. you're getting better now, and we have lots of cool better. stuff. We have lots of cool stuff coming up. We've got our anniversary show. 
coming up in May. We've got more streams happening in May. And E3 is like six weeks away, you guys. Shh, don't mention it. <laughs> oh, I am excited. And very soon we're going to be able to announce what we're doing there. We can't yet, but we will be there. It's going to be great. We still haven't uh, figured out whether or not we're going to be able to finagle a meetup, but it's in our intentions to do so. But um, why don't I go ahead and let you guys know that we've got two wonderful sponsors on the show this week. We've got Ripped Gamers, which I'll tell you about later. And of course, Video Game Abomination. So this was the Kickstarter project that we informed you guys about last week. What if there was a book filled with all of your favorite video game characters, but then someone decided to take the piss out of them? Well, there is. And this is it. Video Game Abominations takes all the characters you know and then lovingly mocks them. This book is written and illustrated by gamers for gamers. The book will be on sale for only one month exclusively on Kickstarter. It's formatted like a satirical encyclopedia and will feature characters like Pac-Man, Solid Snake, and Mario. And on top of getting the book, backers will also have the option to choose a character, if they pick so in their rewards, that they want to see in the book or even get a character dedicated to them. Now, once it's gone, it's going to be gone, you guys. You're never going to be able to buy another copy. So if you want to get in on it, you can go support them uh, now until May 11th and help them decide what character should be in the book. Now, if you want a sneak peek, I'm going to read a short excerpt. The Pac-Man is a creature of enormous size and insatiable hunger, unable to survive more than a few seconds without ingesting its next meal. These omnivores are constantly feeding like Brittany. However, despite yeah. the obvious threat they pose, these creatures were used by previous civilizations as entertainment, like Steiner. Placed in mazes, spectators <laughs> would bet some <laughs> form of currency over how much food they thought the creature could devour before it died, like me. Um, Wait, to learn more about <laughs> video game abominations and to place your pledge before this book is gone forever, you can, of course, search video game abominations on Kickstarter. And you could also go to quietstoriesblog.com where you can find all of the info behind the company that is creating this book, behind the team that is handcrafting these illustrations. If you want to know, like, hey, like, is this Kickstarter legit? Yeah, it is. There's a whole team behind it. Again, that's quietstoriesblog.com. So Q-U-I-E-T-S-T-O-R-I-E-S-B-L-O-G, quietstoriesblog.com to find out about Video Game Abominations, the Kickstarter project. So thank you so much to them for uh, supporting us and for sponsoring the show. Because of sponsors like them, we are able to bring... What's Good Games to you 100% free. Nobody has to pay to listen or watch What's Good Games, whether you do it on podcast services or whether you do it at youtube.com slash what's good games. And we appreciate the people who support us, not only our sponsors, but also our amazing patrons. We love you guys. And we will be reading our awesome Turbo Patrons and Above in the third segment, so stick around for your shout out. But now we are going to talk about one of my favorite video game development studios, BioWare. That's right. It's time to get oh to the news. Oh, boy. Britt, what? Wait, wait, what? What's what's that? What's this face? I, I, I think I Brittany's so happy she's cl <laughs> crying. I, I'm clench crying. Clench? No, I, Why are you <laughs> clenching? <laughs> no, BioWare, it's, we'll talk about it, but it's just whenever you're in the news, it's not like a super like, oh, my God, so exciting. It's because there's something sort of sad to talk about. Sad-ish. I don't, know this, oh. I don't know if this is sad, okay. but I will go well, ahead and read the story. Yeah. I think I know which part you think is sad. Okay. I know what you mean. All right. So over on IGN, they write that Bioware will focus on delivering an engaging story, world, and characters in Anthem, particularly following the failings of Mass Effect Andromeda and its lack of story DLC. In a recent blog post, the studio's general manager, Casey Hudson, discussed how Bioware will learn from the mistakes it has made with the latest Mass Effect title. Hudson touched on how the developer failed to deliver a story DLC about the unresolved plot of the missing Corian arc, saying that this is something the studio needs to avoid moving forward. As you know, quote, <clears throat> excuse me, quote, as you know, we were not able to deliver story DLC for Andromeda. This was as frustrating for us as it was for players, and it was something we knew we had to solve in future games, Hudson said. The general manager also acknowledged Bioware needed to spend more time on the story elements in Andromeda, which is why the developer is refocusing its efforts on creating a rich story and world in Anthem. Quote, we need to delight players with new experiences and innovation, but we must stay focused on the importance of the world character and storytelling elements storytelling elements that players expect from our games. 
And our games must be designed to continue delivering new stories and experiences in an ongoing relationship with players in the worlds we're evolving together. Anthem was first announced, of course, at E3 2017, and it's an open-world role-playing game with a seemingly heavy focus on online play. It was originally set to launch sometime this year on PS4, PC, and Xbox One, but got delayed to 2019. With the extra time and refocus, Hudson promises Anthem will live up to expectations. It will be unlike anything you've played, but if we do it right, it will feel distinctly Bioware. So this isn't exactly like hard-hitting news, but I wanted to bring it up because, one, we all love Bioware here at What's Good Games. But Very also, true. like, I don't know how... I'm, I'm kind of torn about how to take this. I'm, on one hand, very excited that Casey is writing something because I fully trust his vision and his ability to lead this team because he clearly steered them through the Mass Effect trilogy and a bunch of other things, Dragon Age and stuff at, at um, Bioware. He wasn't on Dragon Age, but... Well, he was at the studio when... He was there, yeah. Yeah. He was working on Mass Effect. Correct. I'm not saying he had a like a like a line in the credits, but like... Oh, okay. okay. His energy in, his energy I was just positive wanted... and it yeah. made everything happy. He's don't... a great man. He's no, a great No, yeah, person. and don't take my side for people listening who didn't see my face as like me being frustrated. No, that's a fair... That, that's exactly... You're supposed to do that. But my point was, on the other hand... This, this news coming out doesn't instill a sense of excitement in me. It ins- instills a sense of, like, does this mean that we're not going to get Anthem for a really long time? Because that's what I feel I it I'm feels like. I why this why it was necessary for them to put this blog out at all. Have you heard that's of a I little wonder. company called EA and microtransactions and boffing the shit out of games? That's why. Yeah, no, I have. But I just I think it's more of, like, this seems like... A strange, I I cover your ass really early moment. I, I don't know. It's trying, just like it's a, sorry. I think they're no, trying to course. instill confidence. Is what's happening, and that's why I was saying earlier. It's it's not as sad. Oh my god, this is awful. But would this statement be coming out had Mass Effect and Drama done really well? Would Casey feel the need to make? The, I wouldn't say this is a candid statement, but it's nice that he's communicating directly with the audience. And saying, hey, you know, don't worry, we're going to be super story driven. I promise you it'll still be good. And of course, you know, like the Corian arc isn't a thing that happened. And they had to talk about that because I think a lot of people who aren't in, informed or in the industry are like, okay, what's the future of Anthem? What's the future of Dragon Age? What's the future of Mass Effect? Is Anthem still going to be a thing? Can Anthem redeem anything? Is there any hope and dreams for Bioware? So to us, I think this doesn't seem like news, but I think for people who really aren't familiar with how the industry works, it's just one of those reassurance statements no it's definitely a reassurance move i would say it's i mean i guess they want to kind of get this out of the way so that when e3 rolls around like they can just focus on talking like talking anthem up and hopefully not really have to answer too much for the quote-unquote crimes of andromeda and like (laughs) can just put that baby to bed and move on with our lives because yeah i mean obviously casey had nothing to do with andromeda he wasn't at the studio but um, it's interesting to have him kind of like accept responsibility for that and and be like, hey man, like, yep, that was a that was a misstep and we know it, which obviously, of course, they do. They're not stupid. Um, although I'm inter- I'm curious to see, like, the one thing I found interesting when they're like, you know, we should have spent more time on the story elements of Andromeda, and I'm like, well, I think uh, for me it was more of the story was just kind of weird and like you could have it was for me more of the focus of the story that was off versus yeah the I content there you know I no, I definitely agree with you Steimer that like the focus was what was off I think the biggest problem that Andromeda had was that there was too much of this filler content and not enough of a like a, a streamlining of the storylines that really mattered I think that Clearly, they needed to plant a flag for Ryder as the new protagonist and really kind of flesh out who Ryder is, who Ryder's crewmates are, why he or she is on this mission. But the what they sacrificed to to kind of insert some gameplay opportunities to do so, I felt was very superfluous in some areas. And that's what's kind of like frustrating when you look back as kind of like a post-mortem to be like okay what could we have done differently in Mass Effect Andromeda if you 
push aside like the animation problems and the glitches and the character customization issues and like all the number of like nitpicky small production items like the overall thing that was really frustrating with Mass Effect Andromeda was that there was just like some fundamental design choices that made you go why did you do it this way when you haven't done it this way before and it doesn't really make sense and now having played God of War and hopefully now since you know the podcast is coming out on Friday and now it's finally available for everybody we will you know get some people's opinions but like it's you see how succinct they made some of their gameplay choices and go why don't more production teams look at you know, that is an example to go, we don't need to insert all this bullshit. You know, we don't need to make this superficial, longer experience just to say it's longer to make people think that, you know, because they're paying fifty nine ninety nine, you know, here in the, in the United States and other prices and other territories, they're like, they need to have an arbitrary amount of stuff to do. Right. No, totally. And I think that, I can't remember the exact statistic, but, um, I always find it curious how game developers are like, we need to add more, we need to add more, we need to add value so that people like feel like they're getting uh, you know, their dollars worth for our game, but then you you look at the stats of like how many people actually complete these games and it's fuck it's minuscule, right? Like and you're like, so no, what they what they do what they need is not more especially if it's filler. Um what you need are better crafted experiences, better edited experiences, better, you know, like that's what it has been missing in my opinion. And it's why for me, like a lot of games, like I don't finish a lot of games anymore. I used to finish them even if I didn't really like them. Um, and now I'm just like, you know what? Like I, I just think games need better editing at this point. Someone's got to get in there and trim the fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think, because I was hanging out with some friends over the weekend who are, I hate, I hate the term casual gamer, I hate it, but they play video games primarily as a hobby, nothing else. And I was explaining Anthem to them and what I know of it, and their first reaction was like, oh, so it's kind of like Destiny. And then they were saying, but Bioware is known for its story. How, are, if it's like Destiny, and how, so I think also, and I don't know if anyone else thinks that way, I think the fact that they're saying it's going to focus on story is just, like I said, another reassur reassurance, sta reassurance statement. Um, even though I know Bungie was saying before Destiny 2, hey, we're going to have so much story. People aren't going to know what to do with it. We're going to have so much story. And then look how that turned out. And I think if it's Bioware, Bioware has that certain flair, that spice that I think you look for in a Bioware game. And I think story and characters are obviously one of those main things. And like you were saying, Steimer, when you put in that filler content and detracts from that, and then it lessens the experience. So... There's, I mean, there's always, there's filler in literally every game. God of War yeah. has filler, right? So it's just a matter of, like, knowing the amount that feels okay and doesn't overbloat your product. Um, and for for Anthem, I'm, re I'm so curious about Anthem. Because if it, I don't, it's like, there's just so many questions I have. I'm like, all right, like, in the, is it sort of going to be like a, like a, really just great co-op story kind of a thing. Like where, you know, in Far Cry, you're getting fucked over because like one of you doesn't get the story missions unlocked. Like instead of that, like, is it going to be like a good version of you guys are going on an adventure together and like, you, but then how does popping in and popping out of that work? If like, you're not all at the same part of the story, how does the cutscenes work? Does it act like only one of you was there? Like in Destiny, like there's just so many things where I'm like, what does the, like, cause especially because then you've got the whole conversation element to yeah. add on top of this and I'm like my mind's gonna be blown. like I just need to see this game because my I can't comprehend how it's going to work at all how important is Anthem to the future of Bioware extremely oh I'd say it's like make or break for them and yeah it's it's frustrating because like I think everyone <laughs> in this room and I use room in air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Not just me by myself, but like the three of us are all big Dragon Age fans. And like we want to believe that it doesn't matter what happens with their other franchises, that if they announce the next Dragon Age, that we'll be on board no matter what. But like if they screw up Anthem on top of screwing up Andromeda after coming off of, you know, a kind of iffy reception to Mass Effect 3 even though I stand by the fact that I think that it was an amazing game despite the controversy over the ending 
Um, you know, like I think it's going for I think it's going to instill a sense of doubt amongst even some of their hardest um, supporters and you know, the hardest core fans or whatever. I don't know if that's correct grammatically. I almost am certain that it's not. Um, <laughs> but like it's tough because I believe in their potential to do amazing things. I don't know what's getting in the way of that. If it's them being their own worst enemy or if it's EA's influence coming in and disrupting their plans. I want to believe well, that by where it's frostbite. Well, I mean, but like I have to believe that if frostbite was giving them such problems that somebody at the studio would have said, Hey, we can't work with this engine. Right. Do you think that they were empowered to do that? Probably not. Like, I mean, EA has pretty much been like, Frostbite's like the engine, guys. This is super cool. I like everybody use it. And they, I mean, considering they had so many meetings with like DICE and everybody else, like, uh, and they're, I think it's more of like a, well, you have resources, like figure it out. Because the other option is to, what, license Unreal Engine? But I doubt EA wants to do that when they have an engine that they own. Yeah, no, so, they definitely I, I don't want to pay for it. I think it's kind of Unreal. like a put up or shut up, like figure out how to use this for your needs. But it doesn't, well, they've obviously modified it since, so I'm hoping that it's easier moving forward and that Andromeda was just like the tripping out the door sort of a thing. But um, now hopefully Frostbite will, will be a little more RPG friendly with the hacksaws that they have made to it. <laughs> Hacksaws. Hacksaws. Well, we will, of course, you know, have our eyes on whatever they're going to show for Anthem mm. at E3 this year. I hope it's a nice meaty chunk of yeah. gameplay because I feel yeah. like the thing we saw last time felt like a highly, like, CGI orchestrated thing. It was highly scripted. Yeah. I just voice acting in it or whatever you want to call it i'm calling it voice acting because yeah. it was just so dorky Saber, come like, over here let's fly together no that wasn't the thing the thing the thing that stuck out in my brain was the oh cool i got a legendary <clears throat> i oh, know wait. so terrible and you're like nobody talks like good? that is legendary mediocre in this game i don't understand <laughs> <laughs> i i i was talking about this um with Tim on Games Daily about how, like, I just, I'm hoping against hope that EA has learned their lesson to, and Ubisoft too, that they haven't, that they're not going to have this can banter bullshit on their press conferences. Because I think we were talking about the division because Ubisoft announced their E3 press conference dates this week, how it's going to be mm -hmm. Monday, 1 p.m. Pacific time, June 11th, their normal time slot uh, for E3. And I was like, man, I know we're going to get something for the division too. Can we please not get this canned multiplayer banter? Nobody talks like that. Just it, it's no. be it would be better to just make it silent and just have game audio than to have this like bullshit like, hey man, catch me on my six. Oh, I'm gonna flank over <laughs> here. Oh, I'm gonna open this chest. It's like nobody. No. Oh my gosh. No one does. No, that. we're talking about farts and things. Like we're not <laughs> talking about any of that. <laughs> it's, it's true. I mean, we all we all get how multiplayer works these days. It's okay. We don't need yeah. you to walk us through it. Yeah. And if I ever say say like cover my six, they're flanking us. Please, you can punch me in the face. Okay. That's just stupid. That's now that cool. we have yeah. that on tape. <laughs> there you go. Oh, shit. That's gonna bite me in the ass one day. I already know or it. Or in the face. <laughs> gonna punch you in the face. Punch me in the face. Bite me in the ass. It sounds like the name of a song. <laughs> Is that punch not a song? It should be a song. Bite me in the ass. Punch me in the face. Bite me in the, the, face, face, me in the yeah. ass. Yeah. yeah, buddy. Like a little John song. Yeah, I think that would be great. <laughs> what? Say what? No, how does he? Wait. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. I'm okay. Holy shit. Holy shit. Okay, okay, um, okay. Um, moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> punch me in the face. Bite me in the ass. Bite me in the ass. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be in my head now all night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Give me the beat, Simer. That's a gift Hell waiting yeah, to happen. Um, okay, 
Next up, Call of Duty Black Ops 4 is dropping single player campaigns for Battle Royale? Question mark? Question mark? Question mark? So, a couple different outlets have reported on this. Uh, Game Informer has sources, Kotaku has sources, Eurogamer has sources. I'm going to read um, the write up over at Kotaku. Uh, this fall's Call of Duty Black Ops 4 will essentially be multiplayer only lacking the kind of single-player campaign that has been a key component of the annual series for over a decade. Two sources familiar with the game tell Kotaku, corroborating a report published earlier today at Polygon. One of those sources echoed a report from top Call of Duty information broker Charlie Intel, saying that the new game will have a battle royale mode. That's the kind of last player standing mode that's been taking over gaming for the past year, with the success, of course, of PUBG and Fortnite. So far, no big budget game studio has added a battle royale mode to a big franchise series, but it seems like only a matter of time before it hits a Call of Duty or Battlefield, a Division or Destiny. Details are murky, and Call of Duty publisher Activision isn't talking. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Quote, we don't comment on rumor or speculation, the canned answer they always give. Recent Call of Duty games have been bursting with modes, including the increasingly elaborate Zombies mode pioneered by Black Ops 4's lead studio, Treyarch. Black Ops 3 offered two-player co-op in that game's campaign. And according to Polygon, as the multi-year development cycle of Black Ops 4 moved towards the game's October release date, it became evident that development on the single-player campaign wouldn't be completed. Activision has shown some recent interest in rejiggering the content offered for its Call of Duty games. Two years ago, it offered a remaster of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare to PlayStation owners alongside the release of that year's COD, offering it as a standalone purchase many months later. The most recent game in the series, Call of Duty World War II, saw a drop in the number of multiplayer maps offered at the game's launch. Given the buzz of Call of Duty games get for their multiplayer, it's been common for the gaming pundits to speculate about if or when Activision would drop campaigns from the games. Of course, we'll find out all of the details about, well, not all, but some details about Call of Duty Black Ops 4 on the worldwide reveal on May 17th which I will be attending. And that game, of course, will be out on Xbox One, PS4, and PC on October 12th. So this is actually pretty surprising news. Okay, not surprising. Shocking in the sense that so many people like myself, like Brit and other people out there, love the campaign of Call of Duty. Don't really play multiplayer. But clearly, we know that the moneymaker is mm-hmm. is obviously multiplayer. So I maybe this was a matter of time? Yeah. My question would be whether or not they continue to charge 59.99 for this. Oh if yeah. It's just multiplayer. I feel like that's absolutely not going to change, right? Well, yes. That's a giant Especially if they're adding in these. <laughs> well, they're going to be supposedly supplementing those with a uh, battle royale mode, their co-op modes possibly. I'm sorry, but so, no. Like the <laughs> just, no, <laughs> just well because like when you talk about like the cost, the one of the reasons why, um, you know, you kind of like can justify it is like they spend a lot of money on those campaigns in terms of like hiring actors, getting all of like those environments built, mm-hmm. um, and and to be like well you know instead of a single player campaign we added battle royale like so. Cliff Blazinski's team built a battle royale in like four months. <laughs> it's, it's an alpha, basically, but they did it. So Yeah, I mean, in Call of Duty can't release a battle royale mode in the same quality that Cliff's, that Cliff's did, Radical Heights. No, no, so no. So I no. hear yeah, you. That, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, I get you. Yeah, that's free to play and all. It's different. It's apples to oranges, but... I, I pick up what you're putting down, Simer. So it's, yeah. it's interesting because... This will, as we said, be the first time a campaign has not been included in a major Call of Duty title. And so it's a little hard to believe that it's like, oh, crap, we're not going to finish the story on time. It's like, well, what what changed between now and then all these other years that you weren't able to finish the, yeah, the story? Yeah, that to me sounds like a bogus, a bogus reason. There's no way that Activision, with all of its resources, would say, oh, LOL didn't make the deadline. That's that's not a thing, right? Oh no no no. Yeah no. They would have they would have thrown all of their other studios that they have on it to get it done. Yeah. So I think it's something. I think this is just an internal decision. Maybe they were looking at the completion numbers of the campaign for people who own Call of Duty and are going like, hey, why are we spending like potentially a hundred million dollars or more to make this campaign? Yeah. Or maybe 
you know, less or, you know, plus or minus however much. But like like Steimer said, like it's it's expensive between the voice talent and like the mocap and the level design and everything that goes into making it. Like they're like, why don't we put those resources towards something that people will actually play or something that we can hopefully facilitate microtransactions through. Right. Because I'm sure they're looking at it as like, hey, why don't we use that money to make money? Because the campaign doesn't make us more money. People play the no. campaign and it's done. And that's it. And I think that I do think it'll be interesting because like they always use the campaigns to market, right? True. Like, it's always like this is what if they never are like, oh boy, you can shoot your friends. Like <laughs> it's always like, oh, there's like this cool story of blah de blah, and there's a dog sometimes. <laughs> and now it's like, well, how are you? How, yeah. I'm curious, like how you how are you marketing this? How now? do you send that message that hey, we're not including a first a single player campaign? I was also I'm also kind of sad if this is all true. I mean, if if not every single outlet was reporting on it their own out with their own sources, I'd be inclined to think that maybe it's not. But everyone and their mother apparently is a source that has a comment on this. Um, because I really even though I like Black Ops Three co-op campaign. You know, it, it was not good local because it chugged like a bitch, but um, playing separately, it was fun. So I was looking forward to another co-op campaign because Call of Duty games, you know, the the way that they play, super polished, super great. A lot of the games aspire to be and play as well as they do. So I'm kind of bummed we might not get that experience. Um, I'm wondering if they're basically, because what this says, like the in increasingly elaborate zombies mode, I'm wondering if zombies is going to be the thing that, that is the supplementary a campaign with uh, zombies. I don't, yeah. I, mean, I don't do the zombie mode because I don't like the horde. I don't like the idea of having to start over again. It pisses me off. Um, but going back to completion percentages on, I found this statistic from May, 2016. So it's a little old, but this is from true achievements. So 64% of people completed advanced warfare, 60% completed the campaign of ghosts and 56% completed the campaign of black ops Two. And now that's only tracking like a few hundred thousand units. So obviously that's not reflective upon the total amount of numbers sold. But I mean, yeah. That's pretty high. That, that does seem high. And also like Call of Duty sells like upwards of 20 million units a year. So mm -hmm. it'd be interesting to see if, I mean, because Activision has to have access to like if people finish the campaign or not across all platforms, don't they? Oh, yeah. sure. Yeah. Of course. Hmm. The yeah. achievement system on all systems allows them to track that. Yeah. Mm, I wonder. Hmm. But even. I'd be curious. Yeah. Even if we extrapolate in the most unscientific way possible that like 50% of people finish the campaign that buy Call of Duty. That's still like a giant margin. That's a lot. That's a lot. No, it is. Yeah. Especially considering like I think a lot of longer like. Uh, RPG-ish kinds of things are closer to like 20%. And that's just me pulling a number out of my ass. But like, I do think it's down lower on that <laughs> that scale. It's okay. <laughs> We're all about pulling things out of our ass here at What's Good Games. <laughs> that's well, what we do. All right. Sure. Professional opinions? Nay. We Nay. don't have those. We yeah, just I mean, make shit up. I don't know. I, I'm inclined to think this is either way. I mean, I'll be bummed out if there's no campaign, like I said. Because I do enjoy that experience. Those are, Call of Duty games are Granted, World War II was the first one I had played in a long time, and I really loved that campaign. I'm like, I forgot how good these games are. I mean, I'm sure they're great across. You have Inf you have Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer, and Treyarch, but I don't know. I'm kind of sad, but I'm not surprised if this turns out to be true. If th this is just the way of the world. This is the new future, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I find it funny because uh, it's, it's not that funny, but it's interesting to me that, like, um, I'm going to get the wrong feel. No, so Battlefront when that first the first one and it was like there's no campaign lol 60 bucks multiplayer go um and then they were like oh lol people wanted a campaign here you go for, for round two and now it's like there's always been a campaign and they're like you know what we're just gonna try this without it well i think it's worth bringing up that they've pretty much created mini campaigns out of zombies mode and that seems to be what the Call of Duty community really gravitates towards. And obviously, you know, Treyarch created zombies and they've been integrating zombies in other games outside of Black Ops recently. So maybe they're going to have some sort of short form campaign in zombies and it's only zombies instead of doing a zombies campaign, zombies multiplayer, 
traditional campaign, traditional multiplayer. Maybe they're like, let's just focus on doing something for zombies instead. That to me would make sense. I'd yeah. be happy with that. No, I think that's what, yeah. That's what I was trying to bring up earlier was that I think that if it's talking about zombies mode, that it's that's probably just going to be the focus from for this particular game. Oh, that'll be interesting too because... I don't know, I feel like zombies are so, I don't want to say played out, but you've got like State of Decay, you've got a lot of zombies going on. So if that becomes your main marketing tool, I guess I'm just curious as to how that will go. Especially when you're talking, like the people who play Black Ops obviously know about zombies and are tied to that, but like random person watching a TV commercial, it's like Black Ops 4, zombies, and you're like, wait, what? I, I think the it? I think the Black Ops name carries enough weight at this point that they don't maybe need to rely on a camp a traditional story campaign to sell it because the Call of Duty community anybody who's played Call of Duty over the last five years has probably played I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that they've played a Black Ops game and that the name Black Ops will carry enough weight that they that will sell units in and of itself because I think if you look back at like the last decade of Call of Duty it's clear to me from a uh, a very unscientific perspective that, <laughs> out the ass. that black ops is the most popular of the call of duty games the individual titles that have come out over the last several years that they seem to be the ones that the community is the most excited about that generates the most custom content from you know streamers and, and youtubers and the thing that gets people excited about playing call of duty and i feel like the games that get the most crap are all of the other games which is unfortunate for Sledgehammer and for an Infinity War because I think that they do great work, but I feel like Black Ops is just really the one that people love. Blippity blops. What's not to love about blippity blops? Cod blops. Um, Cod blops is my an, favorite thing. An interesting sidebar that I wanted to bring up before we move on is that VentureBeat is reporting this week that Dice, the developer of Battlefield, who is working for EA, obviously is also working on a Battle Royale mode for Battlefield 5. Now, I don't think that they've confirmed that it's Battlefield 5, have no. they? No. I don't think it's, it hasn't been formally announced yet. So either VentureBeat no. is using their sources to say it's going to be called B Battlefield 5 with a Roman numeral, um, or they're going out on a limb and assuming that. Um, I don't know. I've heard otherwise that it's going to be some other kind of battlefield, but we'll see. The fact that it's including a battle royale mode, though, not surprising whatsoever. Doi. I think no. that we knew that all of these games were going to be adding battle royale modes. Welcome to the new wave of multiplayer. Everyone trying to get on that cash cow and ride it to the moon. Woo! Ha! So, Andrea, in the past, you've said that you feel like Battle Royale is a fad, right? That's going to just simmer down a bit? Or do you feel like it's a genre that's just going to balance itself out? Um, I definitely think that it's a fad. I think that it's going to um, have, like, it's going to burn bright and hot right now for, like, maybe the next, like, one to three years. And then it's going to, and everybody's going to get in on it and try to cash cow it, as <laughs> Steimer saying. And then it's going to and it's going to peter down back to probably PUBG and Fortnite. Probably back down to those two. And I don't know, you know, like how long those two games are going to sustain, but clearly they're both making money and doing well. And hopefully they keep iterating. Maybe we'll see like a third contender rise up and compete with those two, but I don't think so. I think this is something that, you know, people are going to get tired of eventually and I don't think it's got I don't think it has enough legs to maintain i wonder mm -hmm. if um if PUBG will be able to to sustain only because they do still charge 30 dollars whereas i think and a lot of any of the new fuck. entries into it's not that but it's just like any of the new entries into battle royale mode are probably going to be free to play because they've seen the success of fortnite and they've seen the success of like uh, other games like that so i, I like when you look at PUBG's growth versus fortnite's like everyone was like there's no way anything could possibly beat PUBG, and then fortnite was like lol <laughs> so um it's true you know, well, I just... what i was saying about the jankiness of it is what if you know call of duty does have their battle royale mode or battlefield 5 and it's a super smooth polished experience with that gameplay that call of duty and battlefield has I'm sure people who love PUBG unconditionally are going to love PUBG, but it's like if you have PUBG or you have this beautiful 
cinematic-esque battle royale mode, I mean, it's hard to think that people yeah, wouldn't flock that way. dollars and one's either free or 30 bucks. No, you're not yeah. wrong, but I'm saying, you know, Call of Duty games typically sell tons and tons and tons, and if that's just like an add-on mode, will it take people away from Oh, I, I definitely think it'll splinter the audience, for sure. I think that both PUBG and Fortnite are going to see their numbers at least temporarily dip when both Battlefield and Call of Duty, and hypothetically Red Dead's going to have you know, if my predictions oh. come true, Red Dead will have their own version of Battle Royale. Um, you know, when those games come out this fall, I think even if they don't have their own versions of Battle Royale, because they're just first person shooters, they're all technically in the same umbrella genre. Right. That that hopefully, um, even though I guess technically those are third person those shooters, third -person if we want to get like real nitpicky yeah. about it. Um, yeah. the, they're shooters. Right. So I think that they're still going to like see a small dip when those games come out. But now if. Call of Duty made their Battle Royale a standalone that you could get separately that like maybe Fortnite had some, did with Battle so, Royale. Yeah, mode. how you pay for Save the World in Fortnite, but you get Battle Royale for free. Now, if they did something like that, now that would be something interesting. I don't know if Activision yes. would ever give away something for free, though. <laughs> No, I mean, they don't seem like the type. No, they don't. It sounds like, so I'm looking at this Battlefield 5 news. This is an article on Destructoid. It says, the sources make it sound as if EA doesn't intend to have the mode ready by the time Battlefield 5 launches later this year. Instead, EA might patch it in sometime post-launch, or this is something that could be really released as a standalone product. Yeah, Don't what I appreciate that. about that is it seems like they are trying to, granted, this is speculation, complete speculation, but well, considering yeah, they yeah. didn't pump it out immediately and it might said. not launch with it, I would assume that they would hopefully not do a complete copycat and like try and figure out their own mm -hmm. spin on this um, yeah. genre. Yeah, I think the Battle Royale mode, I don't think it's going to completely fizzle out and come back down to PUBG and Battle Royale uh, Fortnite. I think more than anything, it's just going to become kind of a, a lesser popular capture the flag. I think it's a mode that people are going to want. It's going to be around. But at some point, how, I mean, I'm not a game designer, so maybe my creativity is bad and it's lying hidden in my ass and I have yet to pull it out. But I feel like at some point, all these Battle Royale modes are going to be so similar that it's going to be hard to innovate and do something different and at that point what that's when it's going to start getting a little stagnant yeah agreed yeah. all right well let's move on shall we yes please um <laughs> to talk about something that i didn't think was news but apparently girl <laughs> i have feelings well, I have feelings. Your feelings are important, Britt. Do you want, you want to read the story, Brittany, with your feelings? No, I just want to make sad faces while Andrea Okay, talks well, then I'm going to put you oh, in the okay. big box. Are you ready? Make mm -hmm. all the sad faces you want. Pokemon Switch rumors. A Spanish magazine confirms Gen 8. According to a rumor about the upcoming Nintendo Switch Pokemon game, seemingly confirms that Gen 8 is coming. Nintendo, in conjunction with the Barcelona International Comic Fair, which took place last week, released a magazine to attendees showcasing upcoming Switch titles, including Pokemon. The Pokemon section states the Switch game will see the introduction of the 8th generation since... <coughs> Pardon me. Since Game Freak first announced the next mainland game would come to the Nintendo Switch, fans have speculated whether the new title would be a remake or a new generation. Earlier this month, a supposed screenshot appeared online showing the trainer riding a Lapras, suggesting the Pokemon Switch game would be a remake of the Kanto region games. While Nintendo was officially a sponsor of the Barcelona event, fans should remain skeptical. Fa uh, magazines, even official ones, can get information wrong. Okay. So there are over 800 Pokemon. Last I checked, it was like 807. Mm -hmm. We do not need an eighth generation of Pokemon. We have garbage bags. We have ice cream cones. We have sand castles, ladies and gentlemen. I can only imagine what inanimate objects they're going to turn into the next Pokemon. This! If, a five-hour energy drink. Yes. Yes. Five-hour Inia will be its name, and it'll evolve into ten-hour Inia. I don't fucking know. But what I'm saying is if we're finally getting this goddamn Nintendo Switch console Pokemon game, I would personally prefer to see Kanto Region, Pokemon Red Blue, the original 151, it's like a relaunch, a reimagination. I know with Pokemon Go, they just they did, did a Kanto region Pokemon at first, and that's fantastic, but that's on a mobile device. I want it on my console. I want it to be pretty. I want to know. <sighs> I mean, I agree they probably don't need any new Pokemon, um, 
I wouldn't want him to just use the original one for no, one. but Kanto with maybe some sprinklings, some sprinklings of the other gens is fine. But, you know, I guess, and this is me because I grew up with red and blue, so I'm biased. So sorry. I'm sorry if you're a teenager and you started with, like, the Alolan region or whatever. I don't know how old you are. I, it would just be so special because that's something I've wanted for so long is a console title. I've talked about it so many times on this podcast. But if they – here's what I'm saying. If this, if this magazine is true, magazines have been known to get things wrong even though this is from an official source, and they want to do an eighth generation, that's fine. I'll play with your five-hour and ten-hour energy, energy drink Pokemons. <laughs> but please include the original 151 Kanto. That's how I feel about that. I really want somebody to draw us a five-hour energy Pokemon <laughs> if you're an, an enterprising young individual with some artistic skill. Oh. Um, but I'm with you, Brittany, in the sense that I don't think that they need to innovate in the sense of adding new Pokemon because clearly, like, as you mentioned, there's some bullshit Pokemon out there. And once Alexa Ray is back on the show, I'm sure she would agree that there's a lot of bullshit Pokemon out there. Um, I want them to innovate the gameplay. I want them to yes. innovate the look, the feel. I want them to God of War it. I want them to like Ooh. make it like fancy and new and different and reach out to people who have previously never played Pokemon games because they haven't felt an interest in them, you know? Um, and I think that they have the opportunity to do that with, with the Switch. And if they just make something that looks like the latest 3DS games that we've gotten, oh. I'm going to be oh, real. Oh, that'd be sad. I'm going to oh. be real disappointed. Oh, you know what they that. need to do? They need to Breath of the Wild it. I will flip tables. I will flip buildings if it looks like a 3DS game. <laughs> it better fucking not. It better be Breath of the Wild as give me vast, sprawling, open world, different landscapes. Give me snow. Give me deserts. Give me volcanoes. I can only give me ice cream Pokemon or <laughs> give me death. I can only imagine how many copies a Pokemon game would sell if they did something like they did for Breath of the Wild with Pokemon. Because oh. as far reaching as the franchise, The Legend of Zelda is, Pokemon is way bigger. And, like, just imagine for a moment if they did something really amazing, like massive open world like Breath of the Wild, but with Pokemon. And all your little Pokemon, like, follow you around, like, in the anime, and they're not in their balls, and they just, like, walk around with you. Uh, I'm getting a little, get little misty. I just think of it. <laughs> <laughs> it could be so yeah. great, Nintendo. Oh, God. There's, this is just one of those things where I'm trying to temper my expectations. That's the right uh, call. By, <laughs> by the way, that that's... Try and talk to you. That screenshot that they're talking about the lacrosse, um, that looked like a bullshit thing that was made up. It looks like someone just zoomed in on a 3DS screen and modified it a little bit. Is so, it lacrosse? Uh, Did I say lapras? Like a like yeah, noob? I would have said lapras. Is it not lapras? Lacrosse. It's Are the big. Sure? Yeah. Do they say lacrosse? Is that what's in the Pokedex? I'm pretty darn sure. Pretty damn sure. Looks I like don't mean to question you, our, our resident Pokemon expert. But I'm questioning you. <laughs> but Simer <laughs> does. <laughs> I'm listening to it right now. She's listening. Well, people are saying Lapras. <laughs> I don't know. I don't believe it. <laughs> this is maybe one of those things where it's probably split between the community. Half the people say Lapras and I, half the I people feel say like Lapras. If I, yeah, if I if I saw a Lapras or Lapras in the Pokemon Pokemon anime and they said <laughs> Lapras, I'd be like, "You're wrong, Ash Ketchum of Pallet Town." <laughs> Well, Ash is just the worst, so that's He's fine. dumb. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, let us know if I mispronounced it, you uh, jerks. I mean, but here's the thing. Like I said, people are going to come back and be like, well, this is the way that I say it, and then maybe that's the way you I say, say it or not. I say potato. You say potato. I say fuck you. Potato. What? No. Potato. Uh... <laughs> Tomato. Let's call the whole thing off. Next story. <laughs> the next story. And I think this is probably – our last piece of like big news um, yes. is um, Monster Hunter World is getting an update and it's out now for PS4 and Xbox One. Capcom has released another major update and 3.0 is uh, introduces some significant additions to the game, including a new Elder Dragon, a quest type, and more. The centerpiece, of course, is the Elder Dragon, Kolve Taroth, Tarath. Colve Tarot. I don't know how to say these names, you guys. Colve but it's a fearsome monster with a golden mantle made of weapon relics. 
It can be encountered in a new area called the Caverns of El Dorado, <laughs> which Capcom describes as a particular network of caverns shaped and influenced by both the Everstream and the minerals that the Colve Teroth has collected over the years. The Elder Dragon is the target of a new type of quest called Sieges. These limited time events allow up to 16 players divided into teams of four to work together and hunt the same monster. The first siege will coincide with the release of the update and won't be available in the game for very long, although Capcom says it will return again at a later date. So this is really the interesting part about this update is that in your online session, you could host 16 players. And then this new method siege allows those 16 players to break off into four groups of four. And then each group has its own assignments to complete on the siege. So you work together to oh. complete the mission mode, but you technically don't all play in the same instance, or you are in the mm. same instance, but you don't see each other. It's weird, oh. but interesting. So I had it envisioned like you'd have your group of four, and there'd be four of you, and you'd all see each other and work to take down like this epic beast, but it sounds like that's not the case. Well, the four you do, you'll see oh. each other, but you don't see the other 12, right? Mm. So you can all see each other in the gathering hub. Like if you all go to the gathering hub and meet up and are like, we're going to siege together. Um, yeah. But I also haven't tested this out firsthand. So maybe I'm wrong about how this all works. But based mm. off the description that I've read, that that's what it sounds like. It's um, like you guys are attacking the butt. You guys attack the head. You guys attack the left foot. You get the right foot. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna vote. Yeah, it's exactly how it is. So are you going to no hop back into Monster Hunter, Andrea? Because, I mean, this is, has been, like, your game for a while. Um, That's a good question. Maybe? I'm still playing Far Cry. Um, mm. I don't know. I guess I could. I don't have anything else going on. <laughs> so it's not like... Okay, <laughs> so you've kind of sizzled on Monster Hunter is well, what you're I saying. rolled credits. I put like 75 hours into that game. I don't know yeah. if I want to go back and play more. I haven't. Um, I didn't play the other the other monster that came out post launch either. But um, it just got a little repetitive at the end. I, I got a lot of the armor sets that I wanted, and I completed the the quest lines. And now it's just like if I go back, it's just like a bunch of grinding. And not to say that I wouldn't be fun and I wouldn't like to try out this mode, but I would probably go back for like a couple of sessions because um, even though I went on like an epic rant about Destiny 2 last week. Oh, no, don't you dare. Um, I, I do want to try Warmind. <laughs> you better duck. Of course you do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not surprised no, at no. all. You, you're allowed to critique yep. things that you love, and it's I think it's the right and professional thing to do that you try out this content because you're asking to be proved wrong, and that's how formulated opinions are formed or something. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Sound, thanks, Samer, for that vote of confidence. I, I'm into yeah. it. I'm into it. Um, I, 18. But if, if, you are, um, if you're somebody who is playing Monster Hunter still and you want to try out this siege mode, um, hit us up on our Discord, discord.gg slash what's good games, or our Facebook fan page, or our facebook.com slash what's good games page, or on Twitter. Let us know. Maybe we'll organize something. Could be fun. Um, just a couple more things before we end the news segment. Um, Billy Mitchell responded to the allegations of cheating, what we talked about last week, the Donkey Kong story about his scores being pulled. Um, he put out a video over the weekend about him um so he was at the midwest gaming classic in milwaukee um and old school gamer magazine helped him tape this video and he said the fact of the matter is now there is a true professional due diligence being done to investigate things that happened as far as 35 years ago in a professional manner not in a shock jock mentality designed to create hits we will show that everything that has been done everything was done professionally According to the rules, according to the scoreboard, the integrity that was set up, not not 2014 forward by the current regime who wants to reach back 35 years. Everything will be transparent. Everything will be available. I wish I had it in my hands right now. I wish I could hand it to you, but it's taking a considerable amount of time, witnesses, documents, everything. Everything will be made available to you. Nothing will be withheld. So there you go. The, okay. The drama continues. The drama. Cool. I we got, we got called out last week, ladies. We did? Oh, yeah. No, we, we got lots of people that wrote in and were like, don't you step to Donkey Kong numbers. How dare you think it's not important? And I was like, whoa, sorry. My well, bad. Not, 
Man. Not only, I mean, not only that, there were, there was some concern um, that we don't know the retro gaming industry as much as we know, obviously, the current industry, and we don't know That's a fact. the history between, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the history behind this. And there's a, there's a huge, there's a very passionate community of people who know this story inside out, have been following Billy Mitchell mm -hmm. and all of his competitors, and we probably sounded like people talking about sports who knew nothing about sports, although That's we do. Fine. So. Yeah, I think we're pretty open about that, though. Yeah, it's so I was like, yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, what I, what I said was, hey, you know, and we had a very civil conversation about it. I said, you know, we never claim to be experts on this. And if we ever say anything false or pretend to know what we're talking about, we're pulling it out of our ass and making very blatantly false claims, then sure, call us out on it. But until then, I think we can still talk about this because we have the facts and we can speculate on what we know. That's what we do. So we bring the news to you, ladies and gentlemen. Did I not say commentary when I introduce this show every week? That's what we do. <laughs> That's all we are. <laughs> Provide commentary. That's what we're doing. Analysis. Yeah. And the most importantly, the funny stuff. Funny stuff. Hopefully you're here for that, and if nothing else. Um, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, no, obviously we're not trying to, like, offend anybody. That's never our goal. And um, this story is clearly important to a group of people out there that are very invested in the retro gaming community. What I think is interesting is that so many people were so quick to demonize Billy Mitchell and be like, how dare he? He's a cheating cheater. You know, I'm glad that he was banned. But now he's like, hey, I didn't do this. I'm going to show you that I didn't cheat. So now I'm like, wait, wait a minute. Like, mm -hmm. did he cheat or did he not cheat? Who is this guy that submitted the video in relationship to Billy? Does he and Billy have a grudge? Does he have you know a secret friendship with steve weeby like like it, I, the plot thickens so to speak and um drama i'm drama. gonna be interested to watch somebody else do some in-depth reporting on this because clearly it's not our area of expertise nor our area of interest but i'm down to watch like a real fun recap of how this all plays out because i like yep. i like some drama i'd like <laughs> to try about out some popcorn and watch this go down because yeah like i do think it's I'm not surprised that people are quick to demonize. Like, I think that's just kind of the how the world mentality, works nowadays. Yeah. It's like, okay, like we've got some, we've got blood in the water over here, guys. <laughs> Everybody run. And you're like, Hum. everyone chomps down. <laughs> um, so I will be curious to see if, if this, if Mr. Mitchell can clear his name or not and see who's lying. Cause somebody is. Dun, dun, dun. Indeed. All right, just a couple other quick hits here. Shenmue 1 and 2 are coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Sweet. Cool. <laughs> cool. No, this is a series I've always been interested in, just never played them. So, hey, now I can. Just now you can. Now I can spend the time. I don't know. Shenmue 3 still not coming until 2021. Mark my words. Ooh. <laughs> no, just kidding. Yep. It, it might come in 2020. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Is that the what? I think I kickstarted that. That was a kickstart. What? Right? Yeah, it was announced at yeah. E3 2015. That's, That's right. how yeah, long ago it was. <laughs> yeah, I threw some money to that. I get my I Kickstarter not. updates now and then. When was the we'll last see. Kickstarter update you got? Will you check your oh, email fuck. inbox and see if you can find it while I read this next thing? Yeah. Um. Okay. The last quick hit we have: EA admits they got it wrong with loot boxes. Oh, Britt, did you add all of this? That's the entire quote. You can pick and choose. Um, so of course like, we like all know that character. they got it wrong with loot boxes. Um, so over on the verge, uh, they wrote that uh, longtime EA exec, Patrick Soderlin recently was promoted to the company's chief design officer. And he said, quote, I'd be lying to you if I said that what happened with battlefront and what's happened with everything surrounding loot boxes and these things haven't had an effect on EA as a company and an effect on us as management. Um, side note, thank fucking God it had an effect because if all of that turmoil did nothing to you as a company, I would say like, you're done for like, Good if Reddit you could stars. weather that crazy storm and come out being like, cool guys, let's not change anything. I'd be like, whoa, you have some serious problems you guys need to deal with. Yeah. So cool. Glad he said that. <laughs> But he also said, uh, we can shy away from it and pretend like it didn't happen, or we can act responsibly and realize that we made some mistakes and try to rectify those mistakes and learn from them. Yep. 
We had the intent that was designed for us to have more people play it over a longer period of time. And like a lot of other games on the market, to be able to afford to do that, we had the idea of getting returns from that. But at the same time, we got it wrong. As a result, we had to take a very quick and drastic action to turn everything off and have since worked to redesign the progression system. People seem to appreciate that. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> We've to take in significant steps as a company to review and understand. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's clear to us that players see the company differently than we do. No LOL, shit, Sherlock. LOL, LOL, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> we have to continue to be, uh, to continue to listen and understand what's triggering, triggering that. And we have to be very cautious about what we do. We just have to listen and learn from it. And most importantly here, underline bold and highlight this part, be better. Yeah. Really, of all of the things he better said. better progression systems. Yeah. Just be, just be better. Be better. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's like life advice for everybody. <clears throat> Regardless yeah. of whether or not you are an EA employee or just Joe Schmo on the street, you can always be better. It's true. Life yeah, advice so, from Steimer. Uh, be better. So if any non-cosmetic microtransactions come to Anthem, come to our future EA games that don't need it, we can go back to this quote and be like, yo, dude, listen. You said you were going to be better. What happened? What happened? So my last, my last Shenmue Kickstarter update came February 24th, and it was uh, a few screenshots from a convention they were at. Oh. Yeah. So More there you go. Then. It's alive and kicking. They're working with Deep Silver on their marketing and whatnot. So... Ever since then, they've slowed down on the updates, but they said they were going to because I think they're trying to combine forces to come up with one universal marketing strategy, which is very smart. Yes, agreed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for our news segment for this week. When we come back after the break, we're going to talk about what we've been playing. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. This is the hands-on segment of the What's Good Games podcast, where we talk about what we've been playing. And this week, it's brought to you by Ripped Gamers. If you've let life and gaming take the front seat for a while, like we all do, let's be honest, and your health is not where you want it to be, Tim from Ripped Gamers is here to help. Tim is an online weight loss coach who works exclusively with video gamers. He was overweight himself once and struggled to find a routine that worked for his busy and gaming-filled lifestyle. Nowadays, he's 48 pounds lighter, and he's still going in the pursuit of abs like Kratos. His mission is to help as many gamers as possible get started with their own weight loss journeys. To help you get started, he's offering two things, both of which are completely free. First, there's a step-by-step, zero-equipment-required fitness and nutrition program that you can download instantly. You can also join the Ripped Gamers Facebook group for support and advice from other gamers doing the journey. We're over 200 members now, I believe, which is super exciting. Lots of what's good games people in there. Secondly, he's coaching people one-on-one. -on -one. Now, if you're serious about achieving your goals, he'll take away all the guesswork and show you exactly how to look like Kratos without personalized <laughs> coaching, completely online and 100% free. I mean, I personally don't want to look like Kratos, but that's just a personal choice. <laughs> I like my I like my hair. So if you're excited to kickstart your weight loss journey, head on over to rippedgamers.com. That's r i p p e d g a m e r s dot com to grab your free program or apply for coaching and get started on your journey today. Big thank you to Tim and Ripped Gamers for supporting the show again, bringing What's Good Games to you 100% free. So now let's talk about what we've been playing. And now that the day is finally here. When everybody can play God of War. Let's talk about spoilers. Okay, just kidding. It's too early. It's too LOL. soon. LOL. LOL. Um, and all of our numbers just dropped, Andrea. Thank you. No. <laughs> Everyone just bounces yeah. immediately. They're like, nope. I'm noping nope. right out of here. No, we definitely are looking forward to doing a spoiler cast. But I think we need to give, what, like two weeks from today, probably? Yeah. Um, I give think people some time. Two weeks is a healthy amount of time. If you guys think you need more time, maybe let us but, know. But, I mean, it's one of those things where, no, like, we should record it. Whenever, and then like, they can just listen to it whenever, right? Like if it's a third segment, we yeah. make it. Oh, then speaking just... of spoiler cast, I created a playlist on youtube.com oh, slash yeah. what's good games where I've clipped out all of the spoiler casts we've ever done. So you have Life is Strange, Florence, Edith Finch. Uh, we didn't we didn't spoil cast Edith Finch. And oh. what's the other one we did? It was Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods. So you can head we over there. We need to do more. We need to like stop. And this is the problem. Like we always worry about like, oh, it's too soon. 
But I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't matter. They can they can just not listen to it and then listen to it when they've played the game. Well, there you go. All right. More spoiler casts as demanded by one Christine Steimer. <laughs> because like there are so many moments where I'm like, I want to talk about these moments and I can't. And that's frustrating. We did a spoiler sure. cast of uh, Wonder Woman, didn't we? We did. And that yes. one will be edited shortly. YouTube's being a little bitch and doesn't want to process it. I'm not surprised. They're probably like, hey, you stole something from from Warner Brothers. And we're like, but we didn't. We promise. We steal everything. <laughs> um, did Warner Brothers make that movie? I don't even remember. I don't know. It sounded good. Um, like pulling it out of the ass. That's what we yeah. do. That's what we do here at What's Good Games. Um, so um, why don't we talk about the game that you played that's not God of War first? What do you think about that, Brit? I oh, love absolutely. the name of it, most importantly. <laughs> so, you know Burly me and my, at sea. <laughs> my strange Nintendo Switch games, I, I like go through. I'm like, all right, what sounds good? I've played Old old Man Story, and then I found a game called Burly Men at Sea. So, I am on the official website right now, and they can explain it better than I ever can. It's just a little short paragraph. With gameplay halfway between a visual novel and a point-and-click adventure, Burly Men at Sea's branching story carries its ungainly heroes into waters where lurk creatures from Scandinavian folklore and other misadventures. You play as a storyteller and wayfinder, shaping a custom tale that begins again where it ends. It is developed by husband and wife team Brain and Brain. So I had no clue what this game was about. It's $10. And it's, like I said, point and click. You can tell it was made with a touch screen in mind. So you can play the whole thing through on the touch screen of the Switch. This game came out in 2016, so it's just recently been ported to the console. Um, and you essentially, it, it's kind of like a, a, think of a good bedtime story. If you have a child and you're thinking, hey, I want something cute and uplifting to tell, go through, do with my child at night, a bedtime story, this will be perfect. So you have three men. They all look the exact same, minus the color of their beards. You have hasty beard, brave beard, <laughs> and steady beard. Okay, I'm into this. <laughs> and they are out at sea, and they find a treasure map, and they're these burly, grumpy old men. And they all have their distinct personalities, obviously based off of their name. And they're upset about it because they think the treasure map is dumb. And they interact with, like, two or three people in the town because there's only, like, literally three or four people in the entire town. And they're like, go use this map. Go on an adventure. And so... How it plays is you get in your ship, and the first time I played it, I was eaten by a whale. I escaped the whale because I wore barrels. I escaped the Grim Reaper, and then I was flung back onto the island by a giant stone troll. And then it's roll credits. And I was like, okay, this is really weird. This is really silly. And then I started the game back up again, and then I learned uh, there are multiple ways to play this game. And what I mean by that is... After you get eaten by the whale, you can either escape the whale or you can ride it out until you're like forcefully ejected from the whale. Do you have to beat Did the Grim say Reaper in a race? Forcefully no, ejected. Like, yeah, it's it's like through the you, spout, through the the blowhole. Yeah, that or you just kind of fall out of its mouth. How you escape a whale? I don't know. So basically, what happens is that you're going to come across the same exact thing every single time, but you can either win that encounter or lose that encounter. And losing isn't the right word because you'll never actually lose. So, for example, it's like heavy rain. It's just a choice. Yeah, there's a there, first timer. I love you. There's like a tide pool, and you can either let your characters get sucked into the tide pool, or you can touch the switch pad and get and get rid of the tide pool by basically washing it away to nothingness. And then the story continues based off of that action. So there's tons of different branching storylines. And it's just one of those kind of cute, feel-good games that, like I said, if you want something warm and fuzzy, just something really relaxing, interactive story, you have a child, and you said, fuck books, I want to use a Nintendo Switch to tell a good night story, it's that kind of game. I kind of am into this idea. I didn't yeah. think I would be. I uh, I played it to and from my flight from San Francisco yesterday. So it's just it's just one of those like warm and fuzzy things. I mean nothing, you know, not game of the year, oh my god, but it's definitely one of those games for impact sort of things where it's just like this is really cute and it's I don't know if game for impact is the right award for it, but just something outside of the box. Something yeah, that some, you a little like. interesting nugget. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 cute, it's heartwarming, it's just, you know. Cute little story. And it's burly men at sea. at sea. And they all have really cute personalities, and they're just these silly. It's really cute art style too, like pastel colors, and I don't know, it's just a feel good thing. Read it to your child. 
I'm looking at the art on it right now. Yeah, I guess you could, especially if someone else. Okay, this time, do we want to be eaten by the alligator or do we want to? There's seals, Andrea. There are seals. Why does everybody think that I'm so in love with seals? This is your stick. Oh my gosh. Yeah, the art style is really cute. Oh, they don't have any yeah. eyes. No. The burly men, they're just beards. They have like they're a little sliver of a face. They kind of should have been called burly beards at sea. Should have called burly <laughs> beards at sea. Now I'm looking oh, yeah. this up. Oh yeah, they really don't have any faces, do they? <laughs> no, no faces at all. No. So, you know, if you want to sit down with your kid and like sit earlier, be like, and... why first thing Dick's... Please sing me the theme song, Sammer. Tights. What? Oh, I was going with like women, women, and tight, tight, tight. It's actually such a good movie. For Robin Hood. Please and tell me, Bird, that you've seen Robin Hood Men in Tights. I have. It was one of the movies that my old podcast <sighs> made me watch a long time ago. Shout out to the Noob Kateers, Rip in Peace. Um, but it's been a very long time, and I think I was very drunk when I saw it. The only way to well, appropriately right. watch it, I would say. <laughs> um, cool. So I'm definitely going to check this out then. It sounds it sounds neat. Thank you for uh, some doing some legwork into the confines of the eShop on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, they certainly have a lot of games coming to eShop every Friday, I think, is their big dump, right? Is when most of the games come out. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's like the most unattractive way you could say it. <laughs> they have one big dump every Friday? Cool. <laughs> hey, but there's no, nothing I, wrong I really, with having a dump, okay? I look, so I if travel. It's only least, once a week. That's a problem. I travel. <laughs> like, well, it's perfect for me because I travel like once a week, Summer. You see, and it's and big. I like big dumps once a week on the eShop because it's like, hey, you know what? What interesting game I'm going to play this time? <laughs> and it's that's what I love about my Switch. It's broadened my horizons. We're going to leave that euphemism behind and continue to talk about other games. Hashtag big dumps. Right, um. So we have been playing more Far Cry. So what happened was is when I finished God of War, I had a couple things left over that were just hard enough that I was like, I'm going to wait for a guide to come out. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I'm going to go back to playing Far Cry because I haven't finished yet. But Britt, I see that you finish it. I actually watched John. Um, I kind of watched him finish it, um, but I didn't wasn't really listening and paying attention the whole time. Um, but I, I've just been kind of tooling around Hope County, checking off some side missions, um, hanging out with Peaches. And She's so cool. Peaches is pretty great. I really like Adelaide. She's fun. She, oh, she's crazy. Her dialogue oh. is something else. It's uh, risque, to say the least. I think risque is putting it mildly. Really? <laughs> I, I never used her. I only oh used Oh, my animals. God. She's got... She's... She's Tell a me. character. Well, she basically just talks about... Um, Having sex her, all the time. Yeah, pretty much. And what's awesome. the name of her boyfriend again? I forget. It's like Herc Jr.'s son or Herc's son no, or something. No, it's not Herc Jr. That's oh, the, no, no, it's the, not her the, junior. The, that's not his official name, but I know you're talking about the dude who's always like working on his fitness because that's his business. Yeah, so she's, she's talking like, about I his need to like go get my engine wrapped up from this guy. You're she's like, like oh, oh, I like watching okay. his tight ass and this and this, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> all right, you get it, girl. All right, girl, yeah. get on with your bad self. <laughs> so she's um she's funny. I like I, I like rolling around with her, um but yeah, I'm I'm having a good time, but like, God. Damn, if those loading screens aren't just the biggest fucking nightmare, especially after having to come straight from God of War, where there are no loading screens <laughs> to go back into Far Cry. I'm like, why? Why is there no loading screens in God of War? No. Have you seen a loading screen noticed. in God of War? The, the loading screens, I think, are hidden behind things that you do. Yeah, yeah. There's never any. Here's just a screen you're looking at, except for if you die. If you're trans, if you're going from one location to another, that's, me. that's why I'm like, there aren't any loading screens because I hit it all the time because I'm always dead. I mean, that's it. Yeah, it's it's if you're fast traveling or you dead. die. But uh, even when you're fast traveling, the loading screens are hidden behind um, something where you're actually able to like move around and do stuff. So it never yeah, yeah, feels yeah. like it. Yeah. Yeah, the realm between realms. There we go. Dun dun dun. Um, yeah, the way that they handle loading screens in in God of War is is really oh, expertly done. So but like, yeah, so it's been um it's been an experience, but I'm still having fun. Again, like it's it's a great way to just like, uh, go shoot a bunch of stuff. Because I was thinking about you know I was like, well maybe I can run around and like get some of the chests and stuff that I missed in in God of War. 
uh, and maybe go for the platinum or whatever. But then I was like, no, I want to shoot stuff. What better Ooh. way to shoot stuff than in Far Cry Five? Ah, uh, Cry Five. Um, so it's been it's been fun. Uh, what did yeah. you think about your your final your final moments with the game? Are you done with it now, Britt? I'm done. Um, unless you know, there's some story DLC that comes out or something, then I'll be interested enough to pick it up. But yeah, so the the very first uh, region is that was that John or Jacob? Jean. Jean- the first reason yeah, girl. was John Seed. Okay, so John Seed, uh, his region, I did almost all of the missions. I did everything you can do. And then I moved on to Faith, and I did maybe 75%. And then when I got to Jacob, I was like, all right, I'm, it, I'm, I was done at that point. It's too um, much filler, yeah. Yeah, so I just did, you know, the major outpost. And like I said before, I've been playing with Jason. So we just did all the outposts, did, did some of the main story missions. We You don't have to do all the story missions, which was I found out was really nice. Um, Wait, and, what? Oh, well, it's true because you just need to do enough to fill that meter. The resistance meter or whatever it's called. I think it's the right. resistance meter. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so it was, I mean, it's unfortunate because it's such a fun game. And I don't know if it's because of the way it was broken down into regions, but by the third one, I'm like, all right, I've done this for two other regions. It's the same song and dance. I mean, a lo- the, the outposts, granted, are all different and unique but it's all the same thing. You know exactly what you're going to find. You're going to find the silver bars. You're going to find the ammo. You're going to find the quest giver. You're going to find a safe with money in it. You're going to find some maps probably. But other than that, there's nothing new and exciting to seek out. And so we were like, all right, I mean, Far Cry 5 was a fine game and it was really enjoyable and beautiful. The story, I I like to do a spoiler cast with you ladies if Samer and Andrew, you guys finish it. Um, You know, whatever. I can't say much on that. But it was fine. It was fun. A great co-op experience. But... That, yeah, I was ready. No, for that's it why done. I'm glad the game isn't wasn't bigger. Like I'm glad they weren't like, let's make this the biggest map ever or whatever. Because I'm just like, uh, I mean, and it's nice that you don't have to finish everything. You know, yeah. there are there are regions on the map that are undiscovered, and they'll probably stay that way. But I think that's fine. I think that's good. Yeah. yeah, I I get to those those weird moments where I want to make sure the fog is all like uncovered. So I found myself like walking around on foot, just like trying to discover some stuff. But it does start to get a little bit formulaic, repetitive. Like how many dudes on the side of the road can I talk to? But like every person you talk to is like, here's a thing over there. Here's another prepper stash or here's another story character you want to go meet. And I wish that there was a little bit more of an incentive for me to want to go to talk to all of those people outside of like, you're going to get some cash or you're going to get a gun. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't know how they could have really done that. How, what the, what the hook would have been in order for me to really be incentivized to want to go see all of these people. I think it's hard too because like it's that's a staple from a lot of far cry games, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, there's always dudes on the side of the road. And so you're just kind of like, it's um what is, what is the word the term I'm thinking of but it's just background noise at some point right you're like yeah. all right it's fine mm-hmm. even if they changed it and made it different it was never really yeah. going to be something that you're like oh this is new and exciting because it's not new and exciting it's like something I, that's been there for a while I think if there had been more perks to unlock or more incentive to do that by the time I got to the third region I had unlocked basically everything that I needed to unlock to play the game and have an enjoyable experience out of it it wasn't too hard by that point um you know I didn't need any more perk points so I was like if you're gonna go to a prepper stash I'm gonna find is it prepper yeah prepper stash you're gonna find perk points there and it's like that's cool but I really don't need them and I think the puzzle aspect of the prepper stashes are fun once in a while you find one it's like okay where do we find where do we go where's the underground bunker where's the switch yeah, but uh, that or if it impacted the story, I think I would feel more incentivized. But you know, the, the story is the story, and you're not changing that. So I didn't. At the end, I was like, "Sorry, dude, you're gonna you're gonna die from all these peggies. I'm not stopping to help you." Yeah. No, I I rarely stop for anybody. Like I'm just like, man, ba 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 ba, me and Peach and Cheeseburger hanging out <laughs> in the woods together, going on fun adventure times. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> And that's my experience with Far Cry. <laughs> hey, it sounds like a great time hanging out it with really a, ba- a bear and a cougar in the woods. Um, I mean, if that could be real life, I'd be extremely happy. <laughs> Me too. 
Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I always felt like there would be times when I would stop to try to help somebody and I'd either accidentally run them over and then they'd be like, do not oh, kill civilians. Do not kill innocent civilians. I'm like, civilians. I tried not to kill them. Or like they stand too close the to and everything lights on fire so easily in that game. I'm like, hey, it's not my fault. I didn't try to Why light you, you on fire. Why are you flammable? <laughs> it's that dry Montana air. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But I mean, I feel like it's good to know that you don't have to finish all of the story missions to get to the end of the campaign. Um, because I, I've been trying to mainline now because I'm like, stop sandboxing and just like focus, <laughs> focus on what needs to be done instead of just like dicking around, which is what I have been doing. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm down to do, um, I'm down for a spoiler cast because clearly like this story should be talked about and about what they're doing with this story Mm -hmm. and about this franchise and how it fits in. So, uh, we can, uh, we can figure out when that will be. Um, but, um, Steimer are, how far along are you in the campaign? Of what, Far Cry? Yeah. I've only, I've only taken down one of the baddies and I'm halfway to the second Okay, so you got a little and ways. Then I, yeah, I've got a little ways, but I'm playing that one on easy, so it's very, it's like, quick. Yeah, and as long as you do the outposts and the main missions, you probably just, you don't have that, that long. It's not No, I don't think, it, I honestly don't think it would take me that long. It's just I've been KO'd uh, for a little bit with my ear infection, and like trying to play games is actually kind of hard, because your equilibrium is so thrown off that like, doing anything in the video game can make me dizzy just as much as like walking around can make me dizzy. <laughs> so. so so first person, not great for that. I have to know, you've been playing more God of War. Yes. What is your, your opinion of it now that you're not super sick and that you've had some time to play it? Because last time you said, it's a fine game. I said it's a good game. Oh, a good game, excuse me. Or like a, yeah. You know, I'm pretty sure and- you used the word fine. Well, it was probably that's that was probably sickness, <laughs> being just like I didn't give a shit about anything in life at that moment. Right? Okay. I was just like, "Fuck it, I don't care. It's a game. It's great. Whatever." <laughs> um, yeah, now that I've been feeling better and graded, I didn't, I haven't gotten to play. Like, I feel like if I wasn't sick, I would have been able to finish this already. But like I said, with how I was feeling, I wasn't feeling really well enough to play anything for yeah. oh, several days. Um, and then once I kind of was like, "Okay." I could play this out. There were still moments like throwing the axe where I was like, oh, <laughs> oh it, like made my head feel weird. But um, or I'm just like missing something constantly. It's because like I think that I'm <laughs> I think that I'm throwing it at the right spot and I'm not. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> so I have still been playing on normal despite both of you trying to get me to go to baby ass. Listen, baby. <laughs> the only reason I'm trying to get you to go to baby ass baby mode is every five minutes. You're flooding my Facebook, which you're allowed to do because I love you. But this game sucks. This game's too hard. I never said this game sucks. Well, no, but you. That's where she sorry. hasn't. <laughs> what? But I'm with you, Britt, because we're on the same we're on the same thread. And yes, Steimer. I just. You know what, guys? I live I alone. Said, like, I live alone, and, and I have no one to talk to. So <laughs> I nice. have to like. And I want to talk to someone about video games, so I, like, flood your chat, and I'm like, hey, guys, I'm playing this game. We love you, No, you're allowed. I want you to. So I'll be spoiler-free discussion, ladies and gentlemen. Don't be worried. But it's just like, this is so stupid. I'm supposed to be the god. No, this is so stupid. I'm supposed to be the god of war. Ah." So because, so my experience in this game so far is that at the beginning, and granted, I guess that it reflects on the new god of war's slightly more RPG-ish style, is, like, I felt completely... A not like I felt like regular dude Kratos um, for the first I don't know I guess third of the game and it was like dying a lot and was just really frustrated and felt like I, like, I I don't know I was just getting really frustrated but at some point and I'm not sure what the turning point was like uh, at what strength at this point I'm fine I'm still playing on normal and the it's fights can be challenging, but they're, it's not like I'm dying repeatedly. I usually, I've died like once and then I'll do it again and get it that time. Um, so I have found myself feeling I'm either better at combat or the game balanced out or something happened and I'm not Have sure exactly what. Have you been upgrading what. your gear? Of course. That might not, be it. I'm not no RPG noob. Well, what I'm saying though is that's probably why it's not as difficult as it because when no, I, I totally that's what I was saying I think yeah. I think I was it was in that like that growth curve of any any RPG where you're like oh my gear is shit and yeah. this is frustrating 
Um, and oh, so the thing that I was bitching most, and this is not a story spoiler, so whatever. But there was at some point in the game, there was this, there's a section with, and this is an optional area too, with like these level five wolves, and these motherfuckers, <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what's going on with them, but I could not kill them. It, that was the, I died like six times in this stupid area, and I was like, what? is going on. Like, I was just... Sh- that, that was when I was like, I'm supposed to be the god of war. What is this crap? Uh, and these fucking wolves are, like, able to, like, one-shot me. This is bullshit. Because then later on in the game, like, one of, with one of the more, I don't know, bossy-type things, I was able... I just did it, like, immediately. You know, I, I beat the boss. Mm-hmm. And I was like, how are those fucking wolves <laughs> harder wolves are OP. than this guy? So, yeah. Yeah, the wolves. The wolves were OP. Um, but in general, yeah, I've had I've had a lot better time with it as as I've gotten better gear and now feel more in tune with combat. And also, another pro tip for anybody starting this game out, because um, I also think I didn't really use Atreus as much as I should have in the beginning, and I didn't lean on him as much as I should have, because uh, mm-hmm. he's actually quite helpful. He's amazing, especially when yeah. you start to use his summons. Which oh, is, I love the wolf summons. Yes. Yeah, so I use the murder of crows summons. I like that one a lot. But like as you unlock the summons, it's something that I have to remind myself to use. And it's one of the labors that you can like uh, unlock and get uh, more in-game resources for. Um, but he's a character that like once I leveled up his his um, his arrow, so he has more arrows and they do... Uh, he can like recharge faster. faster. Oh yeah. my gosh, the shock arrows in particular are so good. Yeah, he's he's been super helpful. So pro tip: if you're at the beginning of the game and you're struggling like me, playing it on normal and or anything harder, use Atreus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's actually helpful. Um, I think at I think at the time when I was in the beginning, I was thinking he would be a bit more automated <clears throat> than he really. I mean, he does do some stuff without you having to do anything, but like it. The game really shines when you are using Kratos and Atreus like together in their synergy. That's when it gets really good. Um, so that was on me. That was my fault. But uh, in general, and I'm I'm extremely impressed with this story. I'm extremely impressed with the fact that Sony Santa Monica has managed to get me to care about a character I gave zero shits about before, and a child, which I also give zero shits about. So, like, like, good job. Like, I'm invested. I'm super excited to see, like, how this game ends. I think I'm pretty close to the beginning. I've told you guys where I am, and you're like, yeah, you're not, you're not too far off. Um, that being said, I still think that there's there's content. Like, I think that the, there's, like, some filler stuff that I'm like, meh, it's not really anything I feel like I'm going to go back and, and do. And I think the... I mean, there's something slightly off, and I'm not sure what it is about like the crafting and the progression. It's nothing terrible. Like it's a good, it's a decent system. It's not that hard to understand, uh, and I, it's been hard for me to like form my thoughts exactly around it because I've not been feeling well. But there's always something where I feel like it's just like, like a smidge off, a smidge. Hmm. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I'm actually looking forward to going back and trying this game on a harder difficulty to see how my opinions of the combat um, are going to in the progression system are going to change. Um, it's been interesting where <clears throat> looking at the way different people have been playing through this. So when uh, John played through it, he really like mainlined the story and finished it. I mean, with heavy air quotes here, relatively quickly without doing sure. very much of the side content, whereas I did almost all of the side content before I finished the the final story mission because I like, you know, being super powerful going into the, the final um, bosses of the game. Um, mm-hmm. But now that it's done, I want to keep playing and I'm like looking at the trophy list going... Uh, I don't know if I want to go back and do all the things that are on the trophy list. Um, there are two realms in particular that don't intersect with the main storyline at all, which I was a little disappointed in. I was like, I wonder why they chose to make those. I mean, I guess technically they're optional. 
You know, like yeah. it, you are. Kind I'm not of, doing them. Yeah, you've kind of been. The, there are certain pieces of dialogue from NPCs or, or from Atreus that kind of like say, "Hey, why don't you go check out this realm?" And but like you never have to go there like at all. There's no like a, exact reason unless you want to. You know, unless you're a completionist. And so I think that that was kind of a, a miss that I wish they would have well, at least also, given you a they, reason got, to go. They tied, at least I assume that they tied specific armor sets to those other realms. Um, mm-hmm. Because like there's armor I can't craft and I'm like, I don't even know where you get yeah. these items, these yeah. things. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you get them from the realms that are technically optional. Um, so I, I'm not getting any cool ass gear, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, I oh, that's, that's maybe what it is. Spoilers, so I don't want to, uh, oh, go ahead. No, 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 I, I don't want to, sp- I mean, some people are really particular. They don't want to know about the kind of armor. And I can't talk about the armor because it'll spoil the realm. Oh, and, yeah. You know, so, I get it. Yeah. You know, so I'm not yeah. saying anything. It's tough but... because the game is out now, now that it's launch day. Um, and we're talking about the game. Like, all of those guides are going to be available, right? It's going to be like how to defeat all of these enemy types, how to collect all of the chests here, how to collect all of these things, how to – like, all of those guides are going to start flooding um, everything soon. So if you, like, want to wait another week – I'm down to wait another week. I mean, there's a giant part of the game, a part of the combat system that we haven't talked about. <laughs> yep. And actually something that I really like have a lot of fun with, but we can wait if you, if you prefer Brit, if you want to do the right thing. Yeah. Let's do the, right, do thing. the right thing. Wait one more week. Yeah. But next yeah. week, ladies and gentlemen, all fucking bets are off. It's on you. If you want to go. Next week, <laughs> we could do a spoiler cast next week. Yeah. I think. And could. then just be like, if you want to hold off and, Wait, then you can. Yeah, but... we'll all be together in the same room because we'll be together. Oh, together yes. Physically. Together yes, physically. Let's do that. Let's do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, you heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Next week, God of War spoiler cast. You I got homework it. to do. Gotta finish this game. Finish you game have this weekend. weekend. If you're listening to this yeah. on Friday, on Lodge Day, you have a weekend to finish the game. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> All weekend and Monday through Thursday. I, or, this is not a spoiler, nor, but I am curious to know because you guys like, is this the typical um, thing where like once you roll credits, you get dumped back into the world and you can finish side content if you want to? Correct. Yes. Okay, cool. And, um, oh gosh, I don't even know. Mm, I was about to say something, but it might be considered spoilery. I yeah, think even telling people, never mind, even telling people that you can go back into, never mind. I don't think it is because like that's no, kind of yeah. how I mean, like, people, games can reviewers either, reviewers and, and have already talked say, about it. Yeah, the reviews that came out. Yeah, it's yeah. not spoilery to say that. It's not because you can. It doesn't tell you where it dumps you back. Like sometimes games are like you've been dumped before, like the end of the story. Yeah, whatever, like, like in um in Horizon, how like yeah, they put sure. you back before the end game instance, like and then you have to yeah. finish things and then you have to replay the final mission. It's um <clears throat> it's not like that, but um it makes sense thematically. Like how they handle it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's not like the you know, it's not like the world ends or anything. Like that's happened in a God of War game. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely not. I don't know. Um. Okay. Well, let's uh wrap up this segment then and head into segment three before we spoil something inadvertently. Hope you guys have a great time playing God of War this weekend. Again, I guess we're doing the spoiler cast next week. Um, Stick with us, everybody. We'll be right back after this short break. (laughs) I love this, uh, this wave that you're doing. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that short break, that musical break. Always so lovely. Did you get something to drink? No. Britt is showing her bottle of whiskey. See, that's what I need to do. I just need to leave a bottle of whiskey in the studio. So yeah. I have it in arm's reach at all times. We need a wine fridge in the studio. Oh, what? Can I make that it part Patreon of the set? Money. That Mind money blown. That's a genius yeah. idea, Steimer. I knew I had you around for a reason. And not just because <laughs> you're cute. Um, oh, thanks. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, every month at patreon.com slash what's good games, you have the opportunity to pledge support to help make sure that this show comes to you absolutely free. You don't have to pay a dime to watch what's good games on youtube.com slash what's good games or to listen to it on whatever podcast platform you prefer. And that's 
because we have amazing patrons and we are going to read some of those patrons names right now. That's right. If you are a turbo patron or above, you get a monthly shout out right here on the show. It's the time where I will probably mispronounce your name. And for that, I sincerely apologize. Um, I love it. But I'm going to do my best. So we're going to go ahead and run through our awesome Turbo Patrons and above, starting with our sponsors and heading on down. Here we go. Chris Bowring, Alex Rogopoulos, Tim Ross, Tom Bach, Lincoln Davis, Ferris Atie, 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 Atie. Uh, Martha Emery, David Icolucci, Stephen Insler, Austin Riley, Professor Metal Gear, Matthew Simpson, Kia B, Steph Wu, Dustin Lewis, Tara Bruno, Kyle Heyman, Amar Dillon, Sean, Sian, Sean. Oh my gosh, I'm Sian? so sorry. Uh, Stevenson, yeah. Aaron Sackton, <laughs> Gary Wellburn, Benjamin Pardew, Gary Oxborough, R.J. Bryan, Trevor Starkey, Joe Schleif, Tom Coots, El Michelle, Jared Howard, Carl Peterson, Kathy Lucas, Molly Bittner, Joe, Mohammed, Mohammed, Nambui, Jeffrey Hutchinson, Dale Sun, Chris Campbell, Keylock, and literally they have an icon of a key. Uh, Juan Acevedo, Gregory Horton, Lucas Cheney, GeekHeartGames.com, Alberto Andres Videla, E. E. Rizari, e. e. Rizari <laughs> Robert Guerrero, Mark Drastrup, Jennifer McNichol, John Drake, Joe Kennison, Bill Stillwell, Jason Erickson, Sam Baptiste, No Clips, Danny O'Dwyer, Adam Rapone, Not the Figure Skater, Kevin Dunkel, Billy Shibley, <laughs> Stephanie Fitzwilliam, <laughs> Sam, Jason T. Barnes, Harrison Pink, Jacob Beeman, Jesse Giovale, Tommy Larson, Ross Haney, Jessica Salisbury, Nicole Humphrey, Brooke Larie, Asia Harris, Anthony Murphy, Kyle Somerville, Christopher Leone, Adrian Eric Williams, Pure Blue Octopus. Oh my gosh, amazing. What? <laughs> yes, that's what their name is. Sydney Fucking Carr, awesome. Gio Corsi, Marcus Brown, Materia Attic, Jay Mahoui, Mahoui. Oh my gosh, Jay, you even sent me how to pronounce your name, and I said it right oh, last month. Did. Sorry, Jay. Mahoui or something like that. Oh my gosh, Jay. We'll look it up. Matthew Godere, Tyler McCall, Leviathan Masters Barella. Oh my gosh, this name is amazing. Uh, is it Leviathan? Is your name Leviathan? Because that's pretty that's cool. That's an awesome name. Shane, cool. Shane Riom. Ray whom? Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Please still love me. <laughs> Matt Howell, <laughs> Ozzy Mejia, Christian Rodriguez, Louis Creech, Daryl Walters, Donato, Sinaccio the third, Tony Hahn, Genevieve Schultz, Maddie Whitman, and my mama, Teresa Enert. Okay, Jay. Ma U He. Ma U He. And he sends a follow up email and he says, as long as you, we mispronounce it every time, he's happy. So there you go. <laughs> so thank you once again to all of our amazing Turbo patrons and above. You guys are. Our BFFs. The, the bee's knees. The bee's and knees. BFFs. The best things ever. I think... Do bees have knees? Wait. Oh, no. Is this another stoner question? <laughs> they have um, bends in their legs. Good enough. Oh, my gosh. Speaking of stoner questions, Britt, we have a segment. We do. So on Facebook.com <laughs> slash groups slash what's good games, we... Ask you guys, what would you like to see us talk about in a third segment? Because sometimes we run out of ideas, and, you know, we want to know what you want to know. So I asked, and we heard a lot of things, but we learned that you like it when we go off the rails. So I have found an article on BuzzFeed, 19 stoner questions that will make you think you're maybe high right now. Considering so that marijuana like... is now legal in the state of California for adults 21 and over, I think that this and is an appropriate well. topic. <laughs> Hell yeah, and if you're Washington, hit that blunt. All right, here's the God first one. It. If you get out of the shower clean, then how does your towel get dirty? Because you don't always use your towel when you're No, clean. no, this is how I have it imagined. That when you are in a shower, you are using the water and the soap in your vufa to get all of your growth and filth off of you. And those yeah. little tiny droplets of water contain some mm. particle of filth. And so when you're using that towel to dry you off, those filth particles are getting onto your towel, thus making it dirty. 
I think that that's a good answer. I would also say you're stepping out into a bathroom that is undoubtedly not 100% clean. Your feet are touching the floor or a rug that probably isn't clean or it's partially clean. And if you dry off your legs or feet, then it gets dirt on it. I'm just going with banking up more on what Britt has said, and that is moisture <laughs> and moisture and cloth tend to breed bacteria. Moisture and cloth. So Jason has a weird thing, whereas as soon as he shuts off the, the water in the shower, he has to immediately get out of the shower because the standing water on the bottom of the shower grosses him out. Do Why is there standing that? water on the bottom of your shower? Well, like, was it not standing water? Sorry, there's not like, like do, you have, do you have a clog? Do you need to? <laughs> do you need to get some no, Drano? No, no. Just like the few like puddles, the, the extra puddles of water from the shower grosses him out. He feels oh, like he's like infested. That's weird. This morning, not... this morning in the shower, I was just you know doing your thing, there, doing my thing, and I I was like facing facing the shower head, and then I turned around and looked back, and there was a spider, but it had already gotten wet and like was like it was like coming down it was just i don't know what ha i don't know where this spider came from but it immediately shit the bed and like died and like shit was just going, it was just like i don't know i was what i was just so confused because i was like where'd you come from how did you not how did you how did you get into this scenario sir you're now dead you're now like down the drain but uh, it was just bizarre to me that it wasn't there and then i turned around and then there was a spider that was just like coming down the river of shower I have found so many spiders in my bathtub consistent because I, I have a bathtub and a standing shower. Um, but there's like a one in 20 chance that I'll walk into the bathroom and there will be a spider just chilling. And what happens? I think they come up through the drain. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Spiders don't live out. in drains. That's not a thing. Spiders live in the walls of your house. Then how do they always end up in the fucking bathroom? Because they're looking for water, I think. Probably. They, I think they are looking for moisture, but then they don't realize that, yeah, like that they can't get back out so because, this is because of the angles of the tub they can't actually okay. they usually so get stuck an example of confirmation bias then because i used to think they used to come up through the drain and then i would cover the drain that's because of the song the itsy bitsy spider crawled up that's the water spout oh that's f god i was brainwashed i was indoctrinated i was indoctrinated but the water spout is outside it's like what it connects is. your gutters to the to I let the water much. flow down to the to the ground so once I covered up the drain and I didn't see any spiders, I'm like, all right, I'm good. But it turns out that's not the case. Nope. We'll find out. Number two. Although I have you. been known to, like, if, if I've watched a spider down the drain, I, like, clog the drain just because I'm paranoid. I'm like, I don't want this bitch crawling back up here. <laughs> Number two. If you drop soap on the floor, is the floor clean or is the soap dirty? The soap is dirty, Avi. It depends on what's on the floor. <laughs> like, what, how, oh. what, what floor is this? Okay, but what kind of soap is it, though? Is it, If it's a bar of soap and you drop the physical, hard, solid bar of soap on the ground, then I would say the bar of soap is dirty. But you However, can easily if... rinse it off. That's what bars of soap are for. Right, yeah. but if it's if it's liquid soap and you drop it on the ground, I would say the floor is clean at that point. I would agree with that statement. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> down with that. Down with that. All right, number, number three. What does water taste like? Cold. Oh water gosh. tastes Hold like on. cold. We, let me... Well, I drink. I only drink cold water because I think it tastes better. Because like room temperature water to me is just nothing. Tastes like but water. Cold water <laughs> has has a bit more of like a refreshing quality to it. Have either of you ever had well water? Yes. No. Growing so, up, that's all I had. Yeah, I have so... well water right now. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Do you filter it? Yes. Yeah, so I have a, an aunt and uncle who live in um, in like backwoods, Minnesota. They have like a 60-acre farm, and they have well water. Are and these people ticks? Th yes, that's where a lot of my ticks came from. Got it. You remember the tick stories, ladies and gentlemen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I would go to their farm, and I would get ticks because I'd be running through the woods like, you know, the adventurer that I was. <laughs> um, and well water – at room temperature is horrid stuff, man. Oh. It's got such a metallic taste, Steimer, because it has high concentrations of iron. So it mm. makes your blood like really dark. Um, and so you have to drink it like super cold in order to kind of like ignore the like super like metallic taste. But it's uh, mm -hmm. that's a that's water that has like a distinct flavor to it. 
well water. I think we had to have a, a salt purifier back in the day when I was living at home with my parents because I think that gets rid of that really bad iron taste. I think it helps at least. I think yeah, that's how it works. That sounds right. Also, it's real bad for your hair. My hair um, in my teenage years, I would try to do really, really light blonde, like almost platinum blonde. And within a few weeks, it would be this bronzy, yellowy color. It turns out it was the well water. Real bad for your oh. hair. Yeah. Real, real bad. Next question. Do you think sand is called sand because it's between the sea and land? <gasps> Mind <I> blown. <laughs> Probably not, but that's cool. What would sand stand for then? I don't think it stands for anything. you got to so break down words like by, by their Greek origin or whatever the, the fuck. Origin of this word? <laughs> or Latin. So I feel like that, that could be it. It's between the sea and the land. It's sand. But is sand I mean, technically land? It's technically rock. Technically oh rock, yeah, right? Yeah, I would say it's land. Um, I'm like, where did, I'm trying it's, to Google, yeah, like, it says, where did the rock word, that is ground from? more finely than gravel, but is not as fine as silt, forming beaches and deserts, and also used in construction. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there's a story from last year that says the world is running out of sand. What? What? Oh, boy. Who knew? The word sand is thought to have originated from an old... English word, which itself originated from an old Dutch word, sand, which became zand, meaning sand. Huh. But that doesn't really answer what that means, but that's no. fine. I'm into, Brit, I'm into Brit's explanation. Next question. Next question. How come our noses run, but our feet smell? It's like driving on a driveway and parking on, wait, no. Do you driving get it, on a parkway and parking on a driveway. Noses no, I get it, because noses smell things. And feet run. And feet run, but our noses run and our feet smell. But it's like running liquid. It wouldn't make any sense to be like, my nose smells is smelling right now, because that's not what's happening. Clearly, Sammy, you're not high yet. <laughs> uh, Maybe we should have gotten high before answering these questions. I would not have no ability to do so. <laughs> okay, here's another one for you. Uh-huh. Are you ready? Yeah. How do you throw away a garbage can? In a dump. In a bigger can? In a dumpster? Yeah. Okay. We're not high enough for this shit. <laughs> We're like super logical about all these questions. I'm like, I, I've thrown away a garbage can before. I know exactly how you do it. Okay. Why is it called a building when it's already built? Mm. It's not in progress. God damn it. <laughs> But I, I get it, because it's like building is a verb, but it's also a noun. It's also a noun, yeah. That's the English language for you, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, our language mm -hmm. is kind of silly. A lot of it doesn't make sense. Are these all, all right. like semantical questions? Yes. So. All right, we can wrap up with this one right here. <laughs> Who, there's like 20 more of these. Oh, my Who God. Who closes the bus door after the bus driver gets off? That's actually a mind-blowing question. I don't oh, know. I never thought about that. We stumped Steimer. Wait, doesn't the I bus driver have a door on the other side? No. I don't think so. Some buses do, but not all buses. Well, yeah, I guess it depends on the bus, but I've never, like, But, like, you're talking about the bus don't. that has, like, the handle that opens the door, right? Yeah. It's like, chink, chink. Maybe it, maybe they can just put, I don't know. It's one of those mysteries of the world. Hold on, now I need to Google bus. <laughs> like, see? See? Bus. See, listen, this would be better if we couldn't Google all the answers. Right? No, totally. <laughs> Just well, I'm trying to speculate. sit here. I'm like, do they all have like the driver's side door? <laughs> These are the questions that keep us up at night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Who closes the bus driver's door after the bus driver? <laughs> okay, are there a couple more good ones? Let's. Yeah. Um, I mean, this is defined good. If you think about it, there are more nipples in the world than there are people. That's true. <laughs> yeah. That's true. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Okay, this one's okay. If two vegans are arguing, is it still considered beef? Ha! Wah, wah. Like That's a bad dad joke right there. <laughs> That's, really That's something joke. I feel like you should put on your postcard, Andrea. In a $35 Patreon tier, ladies and gentlemen, you can get dad jokes every month from Andrea. That's right. Please. Um, It's one of our favorite things to do every month is write you guys messages on the postcards. 
The one for the one for April is pretty cute. That was me. Stimer oh, designed yeah. it. And my beautiful postcard art. We have a new one coming this month. Yes. Every month. She said. Pinky. Yes. We Every tried month. to take over the world. All right. Last one. <coughs> <coughs> what did the first person who discovered milk think they were doing? Something real dirty. That's a I mean, that's actually a pretty good question. Maybe maybe they were well maybe they saw like the baby calf like suckling there thinking. and they were like, "Hey, I'm dying over here. I literally don't have anything to eat, but there's clearly something in there that's edible. Why don't I go out on a limb cuz I'm starving to death and I'll try it." I mean, I don't think it's like it's not like an unusual concept. Women breastfeed. This animal is clearly like feeding its child. So think, I think, yeah, it must have been hunger of some kind. How many people do you think have died along the way of human history trying out weird random things? Like, who was <laughs> the first person to think about smoking marijuana? Who was like, this is a plant. I'm going to try smoking it and see what happens. People There's probably a lot of shit like that. People probably try to smoke just regular weeds that you'd find in your garden. Oregano. My cousin once tried to smoke oregano. How'd that go? <laughs> No, I'm legit curious. <laughs> How'd that go? I don't know. I, I think I think it worked. Out. <laughs> I think it was the placebo effect. He was oh. like, "Whoa, man, I'm real high," and I'm like, "Son, that's oregano, but that's okay. I'm not gonna burst your bubble." Oh my god, wouldn't that hurt your lungs? Wouldn't you like would... breathe it in, and your body would go, "This is not the thing you're supposed to be smoking." Or like people. Yeah, I think Brittany's point is like, how would you know unless like, cause you know it's trial and error, right? That's what I'm saying. Are people that have eaten poisonous berries, people who who thought to eat, I don't know, what's like a plant people eat, like a, something <laughs> random that you find in the woods, mushrooms, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, who saw a fungi growing out of the ground or a tree and was like, I think it's I'm like, gonna try that to looks eat that. appetizing. Yeah, but that's, that's also not, like so like maybe they had a pig or a boar and they saw the pig eating it and they're like, oh, if the pig's eating it, maybe I can eat it too. Yep. I could follow that logic, but I'm not going to eat everything a pig's going to eat. No, that's fair. No, that's, 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 fair. that's a good plan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad yeah. that you're not on the pig diet. That's good. That's good. Oh, my like, God. There's a lot of fad diets out there, but don't be on the swine, the swine plan, okay? Mm -hmm. But, like, Swine-io. chocolate. Who saw cocoa beans? It was like, I think I can turn this into chocolate. Did they try to make chocolate out of... Lima beans once? I don't know. Ugh. That's disgusting. It's very gross, but I guarantee you someone's tried it. That's I fair. Mean, people try to do all sorts of crazy shit. These are like the deep questions of our time. Oh, yeah. I could talk about this all day. So same with Jason, coffee. Same with wine. Same with, like, <laughs> you know, cauliflower. Who sees that shit in a field and goes, that's going to be delicious? That's going to be real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Baked cauliflower can be really good. I know. I'm saying it, it can be now. Wings, but, like, good. if you didn't know... Like if you just saw it randomly, like on the side of the road, and you were like, "That, that's the thing that <laughs> looks just good." Random cauliflower. You're like, "Man, <laughs> yeah, that looks like a brain. That looks like a brain. I'm gonna it. eat it." So this this podcast episode is dedicated <laughs> to the humans of the world in history who have eaten all the poisonous things in our honor. The and Darwin Awards. Of, the Darwin Awards. Absolutely, that's what it is. We thank you for your sacrifice, and we, we thank, thank you, you for, for your service for good chocolate and edible mushrooms. <laughs> No, that sounds real bad. Not the what? drug. <laughs> I don't know. We were talking about fungi earlier. <laughs> All right. Hey, there's nothing we wrong with edible mushrooms. I love mushrooms. There are plenty of good mushrooms out in the world. Oh, yeah, you just ordered Inoki some yesterday. mushrooms, portabellas, mm -hmm. your classic white I, button I, I, mushrooms. Not, knock it down with the mushrooms. Creminis. No. I, love, I, love, I love mushrooms. All right. Well. This this before this goes completely off the rails, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, this talk of uh, being stoned and uh, mushrooms and uh, what else did we talk about? Sand, cow <laughs> cow udders and sand. And Who drank milk from a cow water. the very first time? Um, maybe you want to go get high yourself now, or maybe you want to go play God of War. Either way, maybe you want to get high and play God of War. Who knows? There you go. Uh, we hope that you guys have enjoyed the show. Um, we will be back next week with lots more to talk about. And um, we hope that you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>